pleasure. Kwame Rose. My pleasure, Daryl Lee. I'm a 21-year-old college dropout. Most people know me from April during the Baltimore uprising. I'm the guy that confronted Geraldo Rivera. Because you're not here reporting about the, the boarded up homes and the homeless people under MLK. You're not reporting about the poverty levels up and down North Avenue. You're here for the black riots. We need Dr. Geraldo on the run, y'all. Since the death of Trayvon Martin, there's been uh, a trending hashtag on social media, Black Lives Matter. And that's kind of put in the spotlight the fact that police have been killing unarmed black people. April 12th, Freddie Gray was racially profiled by three white officers. He got chased down, he got beat up. By the time he got to the Western Police District, his spine was 90% severed. He died April 19th. Working class people, poor black people, rich black people, and all of our allies took to the streets for almost a month and let it be known that, you know, this was not going to be a trend here in Baltimore. Look at your neighbor and tell him I got your back. What do you feel Martin Luther King said to him? For me, personally, Martin was that charismatic leader who came from royalty who got put into a great position. People never talk about the last three years of Martin Luther King's life when he became radicalized. Dr. King told Harry Belafonte in 1968, I fear I integrated my people into a burning house. We got to talk about how we got to end white supremacy, how we got to build independent black institutions, and how we all relate to that. This country is built off economics, so if we're not talking about getting our wealth back or, or building our wealth, then we really ain't talking about anything. We can go off the rhetoric, all the history. Okay, it doesn't so work for me. Kind of a roundabout way, you're more into segregation than integration. No, but do we need to separate our ballots and fund our own stuff and fund our own institutions and fund our own businesses? Absolutely, because so far, our dollar's just going up like a mushroom cloud. In a sense, you both sound a little bit like Donald Trump. <laughs> hey, I don't have a problem with Donald Trump. I wish he was president. Tell me why. Just the wolf in the box. I know what Donald Trump's heart is. I know what his aspirations are. Donald Trump's gonna let you know straight up, I don't like you. Here's why I don't like you. Here's what I'm gonna do about you. And cool, then you can combat it from there. But Hillary Clinton, that's leading that. Why would you vote for David Duke? I ain't voting for nobody. I got the privilege to vote that I'm never going to use. We still in the same predicaments that we were in, fighting the same war we were fighting that Martin Luther King fought. And the fact, it, and when well, he got us, he got a privilege. It's a right. It seems like a privilege if it's, if it's a whole bunch of people, like the whole swath of felons that can't vote at all, never be able to vote again. I mean, I knew you a little bit about Gerald. What's your perspective on his work? I would just want to know what the end goal is. It's a, for the layman of the patrol projects, who is it? receiving all the the ills of white supremacy and, and their hate right at on the day-to-day -day level how do they even begin to even think about that conversation that you're engaging in my end goal is to bring people together okay bring bring white supremacists together with with their nemesis how do we learn how to get along with one another this country is well, about i gotta get along with them pardon me well, i gotta get along with them because they are our fellow americans we all have to live in this country together. Shit. Okay, we, we do. Otherwise, we're going to end up self-destructive. So what is this museum? Who is this for? Who's it? People like you. Shit. Oh, okay. no, I'm good. Oh, yeah. No, no, you're not good. Have you ever heard of something called intergenerational trauma? Intergenerational trauma? Yeah, trauma. Trauma. It's trauma passed on from generations through images, symbols, different things like that. So I have a daughter. She's one year old. However, whenever the museum gets built, let's say she's 15, okay. there's no way in hell I'm bringing her there so she can relive that and see all of that. No, not at all. What's the point? Because in order to know where you're going, you have to know where you came from. White folks need to go see that. How many robes have you collected? Roughly, I'd say maybe 25, 26. How long have you been doing that for? Uh, since about 1990. So you only got 26 you only got 25 robes. 25 robes? You have to you know, you didn't say clan memorabilia. I got tons of stuff. So yeah. since 1990, which is longer than I've been alive, you've been trying to infiltrate the clan. But okay. what does that do for people? Well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what it does, okay? The state of Maryland had a large clan organization. Mm -hmm. When the Imperial Wizard, which means the national leader, mm -hmm. when he turned in his robe to me, the Maryland Ku Klux Klan fell apart. Today, there is no more Ku Klux Klan. I beg to differ. So let me finish. Today, there is, well, you can't because I, I got the facts, okay? Mm -hmm. Today, there is no more Ku Klux Klan in the state of Maryland. Infiltrating the Klan ain't freeing your people. I disagree with you. I, I, I don't see how. What about uh, Timothy McVeigh? I don't, he's in jail. Oh, he is? Oh, he wasn't killed? 
something like that. So what? Well, well, you're very uneducated about it. Well, I'm, we, and you uneducated about the reality of the, most of the people that look like you. Every day on the hour, young black men and women are being snatched and kidnapped off the street. They're ruining people's lives, right? Not rehabilitating them and sending them right back in the same neighborhoods that are already screwed up anyway. So when you say, oh, well, we need to be worried about something about somebody growing something up. No, somebody's getting locked up right now that's 16 years old that's never may see the light of day again just because they look like my skin or, or Kwame's skin or your skin for that matter. So the, I'm talking about the energy that you're putting into all them years. That's a whole lot of years to be doing that, to be stuck. It's not like a fetish. Be friending a white person who don't have to go through the same struggles as you, me, the son in the barbershop or that father. That's not an accomplishment. That's a new friend. That's somebody you can call. And this is coming from a dropout. Do you don't tell Steve Jobs he ain't successful. He ain't have no college degree. Bill Gates ain't got no college degree. But listen, but what I got, what I, the way I'm being disrespectful now. The way you can be in the streets building with people, right? So stop wasting your time going into people's houses that don't love you, a house where they want to throw you under the basement. So you believe that nobody can change? No, you, I believe you believe the wrong people can change. What do you mean the wrong people can change? The white supremacists okay. can't change. You don't believe they can change. White, no, white supremacists can't change. But I can change your mind because you look like me. You ain't doing nothing but collecting something that's going to build your own credibility. You're nothing but a pimp in a pulpit. And you're nothing but ignorant. Hey, I'm Daryl Davis. Sorry, Daryl. After that, I can't shake your hand right now. No, okay, I just want. I just want to be. Res I'm, I'm not trying to be disrespectful, but I just want to say a couple of things to you about the interactions that I just saw. First of all, man, you you an old head like me. I remember the day when Martin Luther King was shot. I was six years old, and on that day, I realized I was black. Not my skin color, but I realized what it meant to be black. I realized that I could die because I got this skin color right here. That's insane that we live in this world, that we live in this country where your skin color determines your longevity. For you to come to Baltimore and disrespect some of the people who are on the front line here in Baltimore in the way that you did is reprehensible. Just like the young man said to you, you could have done a whole lot more work in the black community from the 90s to now to move our people forward rather than come in here trying to uplift somebody that you got a hood off of their head. They still wear those hoods. And while you were saying the KKK doesn't exist, I looked up the KKK in Maryland, and there's a Klan who in Maryland right now still very active. You look it up yourself. So I'm saying you talking, you, you're calling somebody ignorant. You might want to check your own ignorance around this before you start calling my young men in Baltimore who are out here putting their lives on the line. Kwame marches hard with me in Baltimore. Kwame gets arrested in Baltimore. Where were you when the marches were going on? You were sitting with your Klan people and disrespecting my people. If you can't respect black people and respect my people for doing the work that they're doing, take your ass and you hang out with them. Freddie Gray is dead. Tyrone West is dead. Anthony Anderson is dead. All this shit you talking about, these, these KKK hoods, who gives a shit? I don't give a shit about you or your KKK hood. Don't come to Baltimore doing this shit again. Oh, don't come back oh, here. I, I can't talk now? You can talk, but don't talk that shit to me. Sit down and be quiet and let me talk to you. Get the fuck out of my face, man. See how you are? Yeah, you show your own ignorance, man. No, no, don't disrespect black people. I mean, you got some black in you, but you sound well, like you, you should have a word on. And you walk away. But don't but call me ignorant. Don't, don't call me ignorant. Don't come here calling my people that. I just did. Don't talk yeah. to my people, man. You don't talk to the white conservatives like that. You don't, you don't, you don't know what I do. You don't know what I do. Let's take it back. Walk from there where you come from. If you want to have to see it. Let's walk together. You want to get an angry knock off all that. All of you. If you didn't know him, you know him now. This man hate himself. For real. If y'all follow this dude, y'all part of the problem.
disconnected from black millennials or from that age group? I, I've, I've met people like him before uh, and ha have had uh, confrontations with people like him before, not many. A Klansman hates a white person who sells out, so to speak, more so than they hate a black person. Just like the young boy hated me more than he hated some white guy because he felt that I sold out my own race. He was very definite that uh, white people could not change. How is he gonna advance any agenda in this country as diverse as it is? Well, as you know, this is the nation's capital, Washington, D.C. And it was designed by a fellow named Benjamin Banneker, but another fellow named